Um, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Julia Mull. I'm the one-stop operator for South Central Wisconsin. And basically what we want to do today is try and answer as many questions that, that you might have about your upcoming layoff. Um, I know when I was laid off a number of years ago, I was very nervous about a lot of different things and had lots of questions. And so we've pulled together some colleagues today that are going to help to answer some of those questions for you. Um, at the end, we will also have time for questions and answers. Um, or if you want to use the chat button and just type in your questions as we go forward, we'll go ahead and look at that as well. Um, so I'm just going to tell you who's kind of on tap today. Catherine is here from the uh, WorkSmart Network, and she is going to talk to you about the dislocated worker program that you're eligible for. Um, after that, Anne is here from United Way, and she's going to talk to you about 211 and the referral process. Then Adam is here to talk to you about healthcare options. And I know that when I was laid off, healthcare was the, on the top of my list. And so Adam should be able to answer all of your questions about health, um, healthcare options. And then after that, Joan is here and she's gonna talk to you about unemployment and um, all the things that you need to know when you're filing your unemployment claims. And Catherine will come back towards the end. And then Kristen is also going to jump on at the end and talk to you about job fairs um, that you're going to have soon. So I just know, want you to know that there's a lot of information that you're going to hear today, and it can sound very overwhelming. There is an electronic file that's going to be sent to you um, from Kristen. She's going to send that off to you in an in a electronic file with a lot of information in it so that you don't have to remember everything today. Um, it's there for you. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Catherine. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Catherine Watson, and I'm a career planner with the WorkSmart Network. And I wish we were meeting under different circumstances today. I would have loved to have been there in person, but I'm hopeful that we can get you the information you need for your transition. Um, I know these are challenging times and that you're going to receive a lot of information today. Our goal at the WorkSmart Network is to get you back into the workforce. So to give you a little background on the WorkSmart Network, we're a network of nonprofit agencies um, and technical colleges made possible by the Rapid Response and Dislocated Worker Program. So what, and that's under the Department of Labor. So what that means is that we're not a staffing agency or placement service. We provide workforce solutions and services to you at no cost. We've helped local dislocated workers from large companies such as McCain Foods, Tyson Foods, and Western Industries, and many more. And each year we help over 700 job seekers transition into new in-demand careers. I know you're going to receive a lot of information right now, which can be overwhelming. So what I want you to take away from this is that the WorkSmart Network is here to help. Maybe you need assistance in writing a resume or searching for your next career. Maybe you'd like to brush up on your computer skills. Maybe you would like to go back to school. We have training navigators at both Marine Park Technical College and Madison College who can help you explore training options. Or maybe you don't know what you need or where to start yet. And that's also where WorkSmart comes in. It's our job to make this transition as smooth as possible for you. The WorkSmart Network has many resources. So the best way to know how to serve you is to have a conversation about your individual needs and goals. You'll be receiving a WorkSmart interest form to fill out. So when you can, please do that. It doesn't commit you to anything. It just opens the door for that conversation to happen. And it's a proactive step you can take during this difficult transition. So as you get through these presentations, just remember that we're here to help you. It's our job at WorkSmart to figure out the right combination of services to assist you on your career path. And we very much look forward to connecting with you. And I will pass it on to the next person. Hi, um, this is Ann McNary. Um, I work at United Way, and um, I'm going to cover just a few items real quickly. Uh, you will be receiving materials, so hopefully you can just look through those um, at your own convenience. First is about personal finances, um, your household budget. You know, you have had notice of this layoff, unfortunately. So it's you know a time to be thinking about where are you spending monies, um, what are your priorities. Um, this really is important right now to be contacting creditors. Um, let them know that unfortunately you're facing a job loss. So to make arrangements while you're still employed is a lot easier than after the fact. And then credit card purchases. Um, if at all possible, you need to stop those because that is a place where people really, really run into problems. So I won't do anything more on personal finances. You will get more material about that. Uh, the next part is about looking for a job. 
And um, this really is a time to be thinking about your skills, your responsibilities at work. You might have a job title that, like I used to be called a customer care advocate. Who knows what that possibly means? So um, this is a time to really be thinking about the job responsibilities that you have. Maybe you've served as like a lead worker, but it's never been an official title. So be thinking about stuff you do on the job. You know, if you're able to stand for long periods of time, things like that. Also volunteer activities. These do count and you can include those on your resume. So it might be that you've been treasurer of your bowling league, although you probably haven't been able to be bowling in the recent past now. Um, but that can go on there, or maybe you help at your kid's school, you build playground equipment, whatever it might be. This is a time where um, really be taking stock in all the stuff that you do. Also, this is a time to share with others. Um, the, the technical federal term is you will be a dislocated worker. Um, people might not have put two and two together to figure out, oh, that company's shutting down. I didn't realize you worked there. So. Um, this really is a time to share with your neighbors and friends um, that unfortunately, through no fault of your own, you are going to be looking for a job. Um, my brother, and I use this story all the time um, because unfortunately it's true, um, he has lost three jobs through downsizings and plant closings in the last about 10 years. His last job he actually got when he was walking out to the dumpster, he was cleaning out a warehouse and the guy that worked on his forklift was driving by. And he goes, what's going on? And he goes, I'm losing another job. And so the, the forklift fixer, he goes, well, that's weird. We're hiring a parts manager and they haven't hired anyone in eight years. They don't even know how to do it. So two weeks later, my brother was working at that company. So this really is a time to let people know what's going on. This also is a time to not be humble or shy. Don't sell yourself short. You've worked hard, you do a good job, you show up, all that. This is time to, you know, kind of like dig me, I'm working hard. Um, and then the next thing, and probably the most important thing, is 211. I don't know if you're aware of this as a, an available community resource, but anybody in Wisconsin and pretty much anybody in the United States can pick up a phone and dial 211 to get information about available community resources. So this could be something like, where can I find a free computer? because it's, um, you know, I need to do my unemployment online or I need to look for a job online, or it could be, um, how do I get help with my mortgage or rent? So 211 is a number that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and it, it, you will have to give your zip code and they might ask your age because some programs are more age specific, like senior focused or whatever, but that's really pretty much it. So this really is something, um, 211 is a valuable number, as you will hear on this call or this presentation. Um, there, are, there are a lot of resources out there and sometimes it's hard to keep them all straight. So this is a, a number you can call and say, hey, I heard about something, I don't even know where to start. And one of the uh, information referral specialists will be able to hit, get you pointed in the right direction. So good luck to you all, I hope you uh, get through this next chapter of your life and get onto um, very suitable employment. And I'm going to turn it over to Adam to talk about healthcare. Thank you. Great. Yep, hey, that's me. Okay, my name is Adam Van Spanker, and I'm the Navigator Program Manager with Covering Wisconsin. Uh, Covering Wisconsin is an organization that helps connect people to health insurance. We do some other outreach and things like that too, but our, our main focus is to help connect people to health insurance for free. We have what's called the state's navigator grant. Oh, I'm sorry, next slide. Um, the state's navigator grant, which is a, is a federal title that means that we are experts in health insurance and public benefits like Medicaid, and we can help you navigate the system to figure out which one is right for you and your family. So. What that means for you may be different, um, you know, right after you, you've lost work, often that means you've lost health insurance and your priorities may be different based on, you know, whether you're trying to pay rent or your mortgage or figure out food first. But a lot of people, you know, have health conditions that they're trying to manage and oftentimes health insurance becomes a, a very important focus for, for after losing employment. And there are options available. Next slide. 
When you, um, there are a number of health insurance options available to, to people, whether they're employed or not. Um, BadgerCare is the state's Medicaid program for low-income people. So if your income has suddenly dropped to zero, um, especially if you haven't received any unemployment yet, you can get in and on BadgerCare. And right now, it's actually a little bit different because of the pandemic going on. Once you get on BadgerCare, you, you stay on BadgerCare for right now, no matter what changes you report. Um, if you end up getting other health insurance through a job, great. You hop off BadgerCare. Um, but right now, it's it's open. If, if you have no income, you should be going to the federal health insurance or uh, going to Badger Care, um, which is access.wisconsin.gov, or you call Covering Wisconsin, and we'll talk about how to connect to Covering Wisconsin navigators for help with this process. Because um, as was said earlier, there's a lot of information that's going to be thrown at you. It's all it's. It's not necessarily overly complicated, but once you start get, figuring out health insurance in your own situation, it really can be. But there are experts available like our navigators to help you with that. The marketplace is your second stop, I would say. If you have some income still coming in, like through a spouse, or maybe you picked up a part-time job, but it doesn't offer insurance, that's your Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. Um, the federal health insurance marketplace is healthcare.gov, um, and that is private health insurance that is protected, has all the protections of the Affordable Care Act, so your pre-existing conditions, your medications, your emergency care, maternity care, that kind of thing. I don't know your exact situation um, here in terms of whether or not you are being offered a COBRA. COBRA means staying on your existing health insurance, um, but paying the full premium. So normally your employer pays a big share of it and you pay what's left over and that comes out of your paychecks. If you elect to take COBRA, you're taking on that whole premium payment. So maybe that's 500 or 600 or even more if your whole family's covered under it. Um, there are some reasons to do that. Uh, if you are seeing a particular doctor and you've already hit your deductible um, and it's important that you stay in network or you've got a, a surgery coming up and you've hit your out-of-pocket maximum, sometimes staying on COBRA is the right answer, but it's often the most expensive option. So we encourage people to look at all of their options before just defaulting into COBRA. So just know that there are other options. Um, there are also off-marketplace plans, but... It's important to remember there are ones that look just like the Affordable Care Act ones, but there's a lot of scams out there and a lot of products that, you know, market themselves like health insurance, but they're not necessarily covering pre-existing conditions or all your medications, or they may have a limit on how much they pay for your care. So it's really important to be aware of scams, especially right now, because with the marketplace, open enrollment is coming up November 1st through December 15th. Um, when you lose your health insurance through a job, you have 60 days to get into the marketplace anyway. So right now you guys, you know, having whenever your end date for that insurance is, you'll have 60 days to get in and have coverage to the marketplace if that's the way you go. But otherwise, November 1st through December 15th is open enrollment for the next year. Next slide. When you're looking at um, health plans, um, whether it's with BadgerCare, you're going to pick an HMO. With, with the Marketplace, you're going to pick a health plan that has either an HMO or a different kind of provider network. Um, you're going to want to factor in things like premium, which is your monthly payment. Um, as I said before, you know, you're used to that probably coming out of your paycheck and being much smaller, but if you're paying the whole thing, um, that can be trickier. The marketplace has tax credits that make that cheaper for you. So if you don't qualify for Badger Care, but you do qualify for the marketplace, the premiums will be reduced based on your income. So that's really helpful. Deductible, you want to look at, okay, how much care do I think I need? Um, keeping in mind right now, especially it's the end of the year. So you may, your plan that you want to get on for the end of 2020 may be different than the one you want to start on in 2021. But the deductible being how much you spend on care before the insurance really starts to kick in. Your out of pocket maximum, that's the only one, the health insurance terms that I consider to be fairly self explanatory. That's all of your expenses towards your bills. Um, you can't be charged more than that. So, you know, if you're looking at a surgery or an inpatient hospital stay or something, you can hit your out of pocket maximum really fast. So it's important to remember that with the Affordable Care Act protections, you, you will not be charged more than that. And that's really important for families who are um, protecting themselves from, you know, financial strain or bankruptcy or what have you. When picking a plan, you also want to take a look at your the cost of your prescriptions, you know, making sure that a particular drug is covered, um, and which uh, medical services you need, whether maybe you're in physical therapy, or uh, a lot of times when we help people as navigators, it's they, they really want to make sure that one or two specific doctors that they see are covered, because that's the most important thing to them to maintain that relationship and the level of care they've been getting up to that point. Next slide. So... 
if you go with Badger Care, um, that's essentially free health insurance to the state. That's the state's Medicaid program. But if you're looking at a health plan through the marketplace or off the marketplace, you want to consider the costs more than anything. But when you're looking at that, um, your low, lower premiums typically mean higher deductibles, higher out-of-pocket costs. Um, but if you can still manage, you know, again, maybe you have a partner who has income or you have income from another source to pay higher premiums, you'll have lower out-of-pocket costs. And that's usually the route people want to go if they're managing a chronic condition or something like that. Um, it's just, it's important to weigh all of those things. And remember that navigators like those at myself at Covering Wisconsin are available to help you through this process. You don't have to know all this stuff or be an expert. Uh, certainly you want to bring all the information and, and we'll sort through it and but don't feel like you have to have all the answers to all the questions or even you know there are no stupid questions is what i usually tell people and even if you forget things that we tell you you are always just one phone call away to answer your question or an email if that's your preference next slide some tips to save money um especially you know if you you go a period without insurance most hospitals um, have a financial help uh, through their billing office they it's either called charity care community care or financial assistance that they, they like to change the names up but they have an application and this is even if you have insurance and you had bills that you couldn't afford to pay um, it's income based so if you lost your income at some point during the year or you had other expenses that made paying it unfeasible um, you can fill out a financial assistance application to get those bills waived or covered or reduced um, and again they'll look at your your income status first but there are other factors that they'll look at before and consider waiving the bills entirely um, you can always look to see if there are other treatments or medications available um, if you're on a specific medication a lot of uh, there are good Rx and other medication programs to reduce medi uh, bills for medications out there. And uh, always, you know, I try to, when we teach people about health insurance, we want them to take away, you know, make maintain a relationship with your health insurance, which means calling up member services, which means figuring out, you know, which doctors you're going to see. Because you we've all heard those horror stories about, you know, I was good and I saw my regular doctor and then he sent me to floor five and I had to see an anesthesiologist who was out of network. So you want to, to have as good a handle on it as you can by talking to member services and talking to your doctors, using your MyChart, seeing which providers you're going to see and making sure that they're in network. Usually if you're at you know, the hospital that's in network and you know that and you've been there for a number of years, you, you have a good idea of that, but nobody likes surprises and nobody likes surprise bills. Next slide. Um, so just some additional free help on here. Um, I know it's being recorded, so um, but there's these i think go along with what ann was saying about you know financial and credit counseling um as, as well as if you are approaching you know medicare age so th there's numbers for for the national council on aging which can help you connect to help for medicare because that's the one that commerce Wisconsin does not do is medicare we are not licensed medicare agents but we are licensed for the marketplace and medicaid but then the number i really want to, to highlight here is 211 um, we actually are entering even a better relationship with 211 uh, going forward this year, where if you call 211, you can even get a warm handoff to a navigator, which means a three way call where you actually get a navigator on the line. Um, otherwise, you can call 211 and they'll make an appointment with a navigator covering Wisconsin or with one of our partners, um, or what's called a certified application counselor, which, which is also somebody who can help you through the Medicaid or marketplace process. Next slide. Our website has a bunch of how-to sheets. Again, I mentioned how complex health insurance is along with all these other concepts. We consumer test all of our sheets. So we create these resources to break down some of these concepts, some of which I've talked about. Um, but you could find you know, what's covered with Badger Care, what's covered with the marketplace for different expenses, um, or terms, premium, deductible, all of these things to find. Um, they're just really helpful resources to keep in your, you know, usually if you meet with us in person, we'll give you a folder and you can keep them handy. Um, but it's just good that, you know, we test them and we ask people questions about things that they don't understand to make them as clear explanations for these difficult terms as possible. Next slide. And this is just a, um, that's what some of them look like. You'll see a sheet up prescription drug coverage, um, one on saving money, um, and then, one on managing um, expenses with a chronic condition and things to keep in mind. Next slide. And then 
we have a lot of big series on understanding health insurance costs, um, getting started, making good appointments, um, things like this site one covers the deductible and you know what's covered and what you're going to have to pay which is like co-payments versus co-insurance and again it can really be confusing with all of the terms out there and maybe maybe you have had health insurance for a long time but you've never really had to encounter these things because it was great health insurance and you just paid the bills when they came but these are times you know learning opportunities to, to really figure out health insurance and what makes the most sense for you and your family but the most important thing is to know you don't have to do it alone you can call covering with Wisconsin. Um, we'll make sure that our number is provided, but always the easiest one to remember is to call 211 um, and you can say, hey, I'm looking for a navigator. I'm looking for health insurance help and their referral specialists will, will help get you to us. Next slide. And here is our number in the Madison area is the 608-261-1455. You can email our general at info at coveringwi.org or as I said, just call 211. I think that's it, unless there are any questions, or are we doing questions at the end? I think we're doing questions at the end, Adam. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, questions at the end. All right, well, I will hand it off. Thank you, Adam. Um, my name is Joan Thompson, and I am the Employment and Training Counselor at Job Service, and I'm going to be going over the unemployment portion of the program. Um, you will, um, as we said, be getting a packet of information so, and a recording of this, so don't think that you have to um, remember all of what I'm going to say. Next slide. We're going to talk about unemployment benefits, applying for benefits, your initial claim, filing a weekly claim, and basic eligibility requirements. Next slide. Unemployment benefits are financed 100% by employers. The employer pays an unemployment tax on your wages on a quarterly basis. Unemployment insurance is a federal program and its purpose is to bridge the gap between jobs when workers lose their job through no fault of their own. Next slide. Filing for unemployment is a two-step process. First, you file an initial claim to apply for benefits and to keep the claim active and request ongoing weekly payments, it's necessary to file a weekly claim for each week. Both initial and weekly claims must be filed online. Even if you don't have a computer, you're still required to file online. Um, claims can be filed on a smartphone if if you're so able um, right now the job centers are closed unfortunately um, but I, I i believe in some communities libraries are open if you need to find access to a computer um, otherwise you can call unemployment and again you know this this will be in your packet but the number is 414-435-7069 if you truly can't do it on your own. Next slide. You're going to file an initial claim during the first week you want to receive a payment or within seven days of the end of that calendar week. You're going to file at my.unemployment.wisconsin.gov. Next slide. Filing an initial claim takes time. So I suggest that you gather all of the information that you need before you even start. You're gonna need your social security number, your driver's license number. You're gonna need your work history, including your employer's name, address, start and end dates for the last 18 months of employment. That includes full-time and part-time and you're gonna need a username and password. If you've by chance worked out of state, you will need those employers as well. So you're gonna to need to pick a username and password to file online, like everything else in this world here. But um, if you've used the system before, you should use the username and password that you used in the past. Now, if you don't remember it, which is pretty common, the online system will guide you through account recovery. You cannot just pick a new one. Next slide. 
After your initial claim is filed, a monetary computation will be mailed to you. The computation is based on your past earnings. The monetary computation will list the wages your employer reported. Your weekly benefit rate is calculated by multiplying your highest quarter of earnings during the base period by 4%, but it cannot exceed the maximum weekly benefit rate, which is currently $370 per week. Again, the maximum rate is $370 per week. Next slide. Uh, typically, there's a waiting week, but due to COVID, the waiting week has been waived. Next slide. Okay, then um, next is filing a weekly claim. You're going to file your weekly claim at my.unemployment.wisconsin.gov after the week has ended. Sunday is the earliest. Right now, we've been told that there's sometimes over 30,000 people who file early on Sundays. So I suggest you wait till Monday, which you can. Um, the UI calendar week runs from Sunday to Saturday. After the week has ended, you have 14 days to file a weekly claim. If a weekly claim is not filed within the 14-day deadline, your claim will deactivate and an initial claim will be required before weekly claims can be resumed. I suggest you don't let that happen because you have to start the process all over. I also suggest you get in the habit of either filing on Sunday or Monday. Filing timely claims is important. Be benefits are not payable for weeks when claims are filed late. Next slide. File an online weekly claim for each week you wish to receive unemployment benefits. The weekly claim consists of several questions that will pertain to only the specific week you are filing for. Please take time to answer all questions completely and correctly. That's, this is so important. If you answer incorrectly, that will only delay receiving your benefit. The next several slides will cover questions that you're gonna be asked each week. Next slide. The first one is able and available for work. You must be able to work, and available for full-time work. Full-time is considered 32 hours a week. If you are unable to work as a result of an injury, illness, or a medical condition, you should answer no to the question asking if you're able to work full-time. Next slide. Work search, due to COVID, um, you do not need to do a work search at this time. You should ignore any instructions you may receive in the mail that says otherwise. Letters still go out to people telling them they have to do the work search, causing lots of confusion. Um, there is a place on the unemployment site that does say ignore those letters, but you know, you get this letter in the mail and, and you kind of panic but you do not need to do four work searches. Um, the, the, wave, the waiver has been extended to December 5th. So beyond that, who knows at this point, but right now until December 5th, you do not need to do work searches. Okay, next slide. Refusing work. You will be asked each week, during the week, did you refuse any work that was offered to you? If you refused an offer of work from an employer you are not working for at the time, you should answer yes to that question. Again, right now, work search isn't a requirement, but, but many of you may still be applying for work. So please, you know, consider this refusing work question. Next slide. Did you work? You're going to be asked each week. 
Did you work at all? You're going to report all work, full-time, part-time, temporary, even if you have not yet been paid. It's when you did the work, not when you get the check. You'll be prompted to provide the hours and your wages, your gross wages. Then what will happen, the partial wage formula will determine if benefits are due and the amount payable. Next slide. Claiming partial benefits. No benefits are payable for a week when the total hours equal or exceed 32 hours and the combined total wages that you earned exceed $500. Next slide. You will be asked, did you miss work your employer had scheduled for you? This is reported by answering yes to the question. If working and filing for partial benefits, report any work you miss, including days you weren't scheduled because you requested off. No benefits will be paid if you miss more than 16 hours of work in a week. Next slide. Separations. You're going to be asked during the week, did you have a separation from employment other than a layoff due to lack of work? You would answer yes if you quit, were discharged, were suspended, took a leave of absence, or had any other separation other than a layoff. Next slide. This frankly is the most complicated slide. <laughs> um, other types of pay. You're gonna report sick pay and holiday pay in the weeks the pay is for. You're gonna report bonus pay when it's paid, Vacation and dismissal pay, dismissal pay is also considered severance, are only reportable if assigned or allocated to a specific time frame. Some people get severance in one big old lump sum. If it's not allocated to a specific time frame, it does not need to re be reported. But if it's allocated, to a specific time frame, for example, maybe you get six weeks of severance, then it's reportable. Social Security disability payments will disqualify you from receiving unemployment benefits. However, right now um, with COVID, we've been told that people who are getting Social Security disability should. Um, and, and are impacted by COVID, they're being encouraged to apply for a special, and I'll talk about it at the end, um, it's called PUA, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. Now, Social Security retirement, regular old Social Security, does not affect your eligibility for, um, for your, your unemployment. Be very careful when you're filing your initial claim to distinguish between the two. You're getting regular Social Security, you're good to go. So just please read those questions carefully. Okay, next slide. Self-employment might affect your eligibility if it interferes with your availability for full time, remember that's 32 hours a week, of work or limits the shifts you are available for. Next slide. Commission sales. I just suggest that you call the 414-435-7069. The, the That's the regular unemployment number and ask for assistance if you sell products on a commission only basis. You'll be advised how to report those commissions. Next slide. Retirement pay. When you file your initial claim, you will be asked if you are receiving or have applied for a pension since your last day of work. If you receive a periodic or lump sum retirement payment after the initial claim is filed, you need to call unemployment. Retirement payments 
including periodic and lump sum payments from retirement plans, pensions, annuities, 401ks, um, are, that's what a retirement payment is. So I mean, so you have to, you have to decide, you know, is it a lump sum? Is it a retirement plan, et cetera? Retirement pay funded by your base period employer reduces your unemployment weekly entitlement only. If you're getting a retirement pension from an employer you worked at 20 years ago, it does not need to be recorded. Lump sum retirement payments such as 401ks, etc., affect your benefits for the week the payment is received unless it's rolled over into another retirement plan within 60 days. And then remember I said Social Security retirement, regular old Social Security does not affect your eligibility. Next slide. Temporary help agencies. If you sign up with a temporary help agency, an employment agency, whatever you want to call them, it's important to tell the agency specifically what type of work you want to do, what shift you're available for, the rate of pay you require, and the distance you are willing to travel. You need to also follow the agency's requirements at the end of each assignment. Next slide. Approved training courses. All training funded by WIOA, that's the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, TAA, Trade Adjustment Assistance, or other DWD programs is approved. Other types of training may be approved if it's full-time and vocational. Next slide. Registering with Wisconsin Job Service. Even during COVID, in order to receive unemployment, you must register with job service. Job seekers right now are confusing registering with job service and the waived work search. They're two different things. You must register with job service by going to jobcenterofwisconsin.com slash UI. Full registration requires three steps. You're going to set up an account, you're going to register for services, and you're going to complete a resume. You will need an email address in order to register. In your packet of information that you're going to receive, there's a whole list of things that you need to have available when you register, so I'm not going to repeat them now. Um, to register with job service, you should use the same username and password that you used to file your initial unemployment claim. And as you complete each step of registration on job service, a green check mark will appear on the website by that step. If there's a red X, you're not done. Remember to look and make sure all of the three boxes have green checks. Oftentimes, people will forget the resume portion of the process, and then you're not done, and then you won't get your unemployment. Next step is some miscellaneous things here. You have some payment options, direct deposit or a debit card. Direct deposit is the easiest, and you'll get your money the quickest. Child support is withheld if there is a court order. Next step, next step, next slide. Unemployment payments are taxable. You can have federal at 10%, state at 5%, taxes withheld. Next slide. Please answer questions on your claim truthfully. There are definitely penalties for filing false claims. Next slide. Just a couple of things here. When you log on to your unemployment site, you can find out lots of different things. When the last payment was paid, the amount of payment, your remaining benefit amount, start and end date of your claim, and the status of pending eligibility issues or appeals. 
Next slide. If you need help, if you have questions, you can go to the website on the screen. Um, also, there's a really good list of frequently asked questions um, with answers on the website. So before you try to call on employment, maybe check and see if your question is on that list. Um, but definitely, if you need assistance, again, the number is 414-435-7069. Now, as you can only imagine, due to the large number of people that that are on unemployment right now, there, there is a large number of calls um, and it's maybe taking longer than usual. Right now they've sort of set up a, a pattern here where if your last name is A through M, it's Monday through Friday from 6.15 a.m. to noon or Saturdays from 7 to 1.30. If your last name is N through Z, it's Monday through Friday from noon to 5.30 and Saturday from 7 to 1.30. And again, this information is on the unemployment site. Next slide. Now, I just have a couple of things that, I, I, that aren't on the PowerPoint that I wanna go over regarding COVID. Um, there are several different federal extension programs that will be explained on the site, but one of them is and everything has an acronym here, but one of them is a PUA. That's a temporary federal program that is for people who don't typically qualify for regular unemployment. Um, so, so that might be you. Um, also, there's the PEUC, which that program provides um, 13 weeks of additional payments. Typically unemployment lasts for 26 weeks, but there is an additional 13 week extension that's available to you. That does end right now, we're being told the end of December. So for many of you, you won't even be through your regular unemployment by the end of the year. Um, now, you've also been maybe hearing about the lost wage assistance. It's an additional federal program that's providing an extra $300. Unfortunately, for many of you, you had to have been filing in August. So unfortunately, that you won't, you won't be eligible for that, that program. There is also EB, which is another extension that has to do with the unemployment rate um, and, and we qualify right now. So that, that possibly might be another extension if unfortunately you're going into next year. Um, I, it, I gave you just a ton of stuff here now and, and please, please look at the unemployment site. There's, there's a lot of information on there. Um, if I can, um, suggest anything, please be patient. After you file your initial claim, you may have to wait to get your first payment. Um, this would be especially true if you've had multiple employers during that 18 months of work history that you had to record. Um, but keep filing your weekly claim, even if it says pending. Don't stop. Um, because you'll have to go back. Now, when they determine your eligibility, they will back pay you. But please keep filing your weekly claim. Um, so I believe I am finished. And I think that Catherine is going to take it away. Excellent. Thanks, Joan. So I hope that you feel that you've gotten some helpful information here that will assist you on your next step. I also just want to mention that we do have drive through job fairs coming up and you can contact me for more information on those. There's also information online if you look at the Workforce Development Board of South Central Wisconsin's website. So just keep in mind that the WorkSmart Network is here to help. It's our goal to get you to prepare you to enter the job market and to be the most confident and connected candidates out there. Again, our services are provided at no cost. Most of us at WorkSmart have been where you are now. And I can assure you that as you take those next steps towards finding a career, you'll feel less overwhelmed. I really do encourage you to have that conversation 
with a work smart planner so that we can help you lay out your career goals and put forward a plan of action as to how we can help you achieve those goals. Thank you so much for your time today and I look forward to connecting with you. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. No idea why. Let me try. Catherine, I just want to check, is that the end of your section? That is, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, on behalf of Bethesda, I just really want to say a huge thank you to all of the presenters today to share information with our teams. For those who haven't been able to join on the phone, we will be sure to send out this link and all of the resources. Um, but before we shift, I do want to take a moment, and I know we have someone, and I, I don't think I can mute them, Erin, I don't know if you can. Um, I do want to take a moment to talk. There are, there are some um, Bethesda team members on here, and I realize it's really hard for people to join in for a meeting, but I want to take a minute to share with you two resources that are coming up for, for all of you and for any of your coworkers, your peers, your teammates next week. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, you know, I, I wish you know, more than anyone that this wasn't the news we had to deliver to you and that this wasn't where we were today. But as we've shared with you, we are extremely committed to trying to help you. Um, as you stay and help us work through this closure, we want to help you find your next opportunity. And connecting you with the Department of Workforce Development and all of these resources is a big piece of this. We also are taking the initiative to organize a job fair for you. So we have invited um, all of these organizations here to do a virtual career fair for you. Um, they all work in the space we work in. Um, they're all looking for great talent. Um, and so I just wanna let you guys know, I know you're not on your email a lot, but we're gonna send you um, calendar invites. And so if, if I can ask the Bethesda team that's on the phone to help sort of spread the word. I know you guys chat amongst each other, you text amongst each other. We're trying to make sure this flyer gets out. We'll attach it um, to the recap email, but um, all of these employers are gonna be doing quick snippet, brief information sharings on why it's great to work there. They're gonna share information on their job openings. They're gonna share information on what they pay. They're gonna share information on their benefits. And so um, they're also gonna share information about how you can connect with them and interview for jobs with them. So, you know, again, we need you to stay throughout the closure, but we want to make sure that as you end your employment with Bethesda, let's just say it's a Friday, that you have a new opportunity on a Monday. We wanna do everything we can to make this smooth for you. So I just, I wanted to make sure and share this with you because I know you don't read your emails every day. Um, but so if you can help spread this word, if you wanna take a picture of the screen, we're gonna send it in an email, but please just pay attention for that calendar invite for those um, two fairs on the 28th and the 29th. And that is all I have. I want to make sure you guys get a chance to ask um, all of these amazing professionals any questions you have. So I'm going to mute and let you guys ask questions. No questions, a bad question, you guys. Feel free to pipe in with any questions. And Chris, did I refer to this as the awkward silence portion That's of the presentation? Right. We do this a lot. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, Catherine, is there in our wrap-up email, just while we're waiting to see if anyone else has a question, do, th do they get your information? Who do they call if they do have questions that they'd prefer to take offline? Yes, so they'll be receiving a packet of information, and in there is a Work Smart Interest form. And then that should lead them right to me. And I also do want to mention that as you finish out your employment with Bethesda, you can still contact me. We can enroll you even though you're not unemployed and we can kind of start that journey of making that transition for you. And, and I'll just offer that your job search process takes a while. Um, so my advice is if you plan to take a little time off, take that time off working with Catherine um, and, and do little bits at a time instead of trying to do the whole thing all at once if that's the approach you want to take. Because unfortunately, sometimes you have more time off than you anticipated. Um, I went through that uh, in the last several years that I was going to take some time off and wait for the right job, and I even know better. Um, and it turned into a very long time off. And it, unfortunately, it, it costs you money the longer you're out of the, the game, right? So 
you'll chew up 401k resources and things like that. And that's not what you want to do. So the more you can help yourself get positioned and work with Catherine and get prepared, the quicker you're going to be back in, uh, you know, a career that's satisfying and that uh, helps pay the bills. So again, Catherine's wonderful to work with. We just absolutely adore her and she works hard and she's, she's, she's a very good resource for you. And I couldn't encourage that more. Um, can I just add, if there are some unemployment questions, although I do not work for unemployment, um, I, after you get the PowerPoint, you, you, may, you may have some. So what you can do is, is email Catherine and then she can get in touch with me. I, I, I hear from people all the time through the work smart folks. So please feel free. And if I don't know the answer, I'm pretty good at, at finding it. So um, please do that. Please reach out. Any questions, you guys? No bad questions. Last chance to ask anything you have. You've got some amazing, talented people here that can try to help make sense of an um, unknown situation. All right. Well, again, a huge thank you to all of you. Um, I appreciate your partnership, your time. I think the state of Wisconsin really put some really amazing resources in play as, a, as we work to support multiple states. And not every state has this, so a huge thank you. Um, to all of you for your time today. Uh, we appreciate it. And for the Bethesda team, we'll follow up with the email, the resources, all the links we talked about, um, and the flyer. And if you have any questions, you know, um, Carla, who's on today, is your HR advisor. You can reach out to me. You can reach out to Janelle. We're all here to support you as you work through this transition. And thank you. And if you have questions for us, you can refer them through Kristen or through Catherine. We're more than happy to help. So thank you for your time today and have a good day.